These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it, all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods, upon the high mountains, and upon the hills, and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there. Even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou shalt come. And thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, and your tithes, and heave offerings of your hand, and your vows, and your freewill offerings, and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks. Israelites, we are getting deep into the Spirit Realm series. Everything you've learned so far in the Spirit Realm series is entry level to spiritual warfare. The knowledge you've gained in this series should have been taught to you in the churches at day one. Spiritual warfare should be a continuous subject to teach in every assembly that serve the Most High. Because the Most High is not of religion and Satan is the author of religion, you will never know the truth about the spirit realm and spiritual warfare. Matter of fact, you won't find the truth in the beast religion as well as in the beast system. The scripture said, Satanel is the father of lies. If you're a member of one of his churches and if you follow the beast system, the truth is not in you. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The scripture in John chapter 8 verse 44 said, There is no truth in the father of lies, Satan L. Therefore, the so-called doctrines in the beast religion are nothing but lies. Israelites, the workers of iniquity lied about the Most High, the Messiah, the chosen people, the locations to biblical landmarks, and the identity of the people in the scriptures, as well as conceal who they truly are. What truth are they spreading in religion and the beast culture? If they were teaching truth in the beast religion, why are so many in bondage? The scripture said the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. There is a lot of Israelites and indigenous black people living a defeated life in the beast culture despite accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If religion teach the truth, why are so many Israelites and indigenous black people in bondage? For those of you who say the curses are the reason in your heart, according to Rome's doctrines, the heathen's Messiah delivered you from the curses when he died at the cross and took away the sins of the world. If the heathen's Messiah took away the sins of the world, why are you still under the curses? You were cursed because of the sin of idolatry. If you're serving the Most High by worshiping the Messiah, despite the scripture said to worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, why are you still in bondage? How come you have to wait until the Messiah comes back to be free from bondage if your sins were forgiven? The Most High said in the book of Deuteronomy, when you begin to remember yourselves and return to serve the Father, he would reverse your captivity. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return, and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. A lot of Israelites supposedly returned to serve the Father when they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. How come the curses still rule over you? The Most High said when you return to Him, He will reverse your captivity. 
It's obvious that you have not returned when you accepted the Roman God. That is why the curses continue to plague your life. The awakening is happening because the Israelites are now finding the truth in the real awakening and returning to the Father. When you were in religion, you were a bondman and bondmaids to the God that ruled all the heathens' religions in the sides of the north. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. As long as your spirit is tied to the evil altars made to the God of this world, you will remain in bondage until you repent and return to the Father. So far, religion haven't taught you any truth that will set you free. Everything they have taught you is to keep you in captivity and in rebellion against the God of our fathers. Israelites, the time has come for you to go deeper with the Most High. Don't play with your salvation. Do not let the heathens that rule over you control your salvation. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If the high-level workers of iniquity who serve the Satans remove the name of the Father and replace it with titles, if they altered the scriptures, despite the warning the Most High made to all people in the book of Revelation, the workers of iniquity completely ignore the warning. Why would you continue to uphold their doctrines and follow the heathens? Nothing that comes from religion is of the Most High. Religion is an imitation of spirituality. Remember, the Satans imitate everything the Most High does. The Satans deceive the whole world through duality. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Israelites, if you didn't know by now, religion is sorcery. Religion is how the workers of iniquity practice witchcraft in public unchallenged. Instead of the people following the scriptures about the abomination of sorcery, a lot of people welcome sorcery because the heathens disguise their wickedness under religion. Because a lot of people don't know that religion is an evil imitation of spirituality, the people have no idea that they are being initiated into witchcraft and sorcery in religion. The Israelites and indigenous black people allow the heathens to define what is witchcraft and sorcery. The indigenous black people allowed the other species of mankind to redefine everything the Most High gave them dominion over in the earth. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Due to the failure of Adam's descendants to have dominion over the earth, despite the Most High giving them power, the Satans took control over everything in the physical realm. Keep in mind, Israelites, the Satans do not have absolute power. When black people stop allowing the spirit of fear to control them, they will begin to do as the Most High command of them to take control over their lives. Until you step up to take your place, the heathens will continue to initiate many of you into sorcery via religion. The Most High warned us in the book of Enoch. The Most High said, The downfall of mankind is that they learn all the abominations of the fallen angels. And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the Satans, and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery, and the power of witchcraft, and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth. Thou seest what Azazel has done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth, and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. The scripture said, our downfall came when we learned the abominations of the angels. Everything wicked on this earth was taught to mankind by the fallen angels. 
I don't know why so many people find it difficult to believe the angels are involved with every aspect of our lives. Also, I don't know why so many find it difficult to accept that the Messiah is an angel. Israelites, the angels are not a myth, just like the seed of the fallen still exists until this day. There is good and evil in everything. Our ancestors didn't create religion. The watchers taught their sons and their wives sorcery. The book of Enoch revealed this information to us. The whole earth is corrupted by the teachings of the fallen angels. The watchers taught the women they took for wives how to practice sorcery. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. Israelites, did you hear the scriptures? The watchers taught their sons all the secrets of the angels. Remember, Israelites, the watchers are one type of angels. There is a hierarchy system in the most high angelic creation. There are different kinds of angels and rank in the angelic world. For example, the cherubims and the watchers are angels. However, there are two different kinds of angels. Israelites, it's very important that you know this. When you read the scriptures about the watchers, know that the scriptures is talking about a specific group of angels. Not all the fallen angels are watchers. The watchers are a specific group of angels that mated with the daughters of men. The watchers' children with the daughters of men are the Nephilim giants the Bible speak of. Today, we know them as the Neanderthals. Sorcery and witchcraft is not of the Father. Sorcery is a tradition mankind learned from the fallen angels. Israelites, our downfall came when the indigenous black people learned the secrets of the fallen angels. The book of Enoch specifically named the fallen angel Simjaza as the Satan that taught mankind enchantments. Simjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Simjaza was the leader of the watchers who rebelled against the Most High when they took the daughters of men for wives. Simjaza was a watcher as well. Satanel, the one you know as Lucifer, Satan, the devil, and some of you may know him as Gadriel, is an angel. He's a fallen angel that wants to be like the Most High. The downfall to us was that we learned everything that Satanel and his angels taught to us. Remember, religion is not of the Most High. The scripture said that Satan Semjaza is the angel that taught mankind witchcraft and sorcery. Israelites, this is why you must know the names of all the characters in the scriptures. A lot of you continue to identify the angels by titles. All the angels have a name. A lot of you probably thought Satanel, the leader of the fallen angels, taught mankind sorcery. Each Satan have a role and Semjaza is the one that taught mankind sorcery. Just as the Satan Azazel taught mankind how to make weapons of war. And Azazel taught man to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of autonomy and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. The book of Enoch will reveal to you the abomination each Satan taught mankind. Israelites, can you comprehend how the fallen angels, the invisible enemy, are involved in the affairs of mankind? Religion tried to make it seem as if the fallen angels, the demons, and unclean spirits don't exist. The workers of iniquity tried to make it appear as if everything that happens on this earth is due to natural disasters, bad luck, and an unknown cause. 
the workers of iniquity who carry out the will of the Satans try to make it seem as if the Satans are not involved with the affairs of mankind. That is the furthest from the truth. The fallen are very involved. The fallen angels are gods to many people. The beast system, many of you call white supremacy, is the Satan's kingdom in the physical realm. You live with the fallen angels here on earth. The spirit realm show you the invisible enemy. When Adam and Eve disobeyed the Most High, they became subordinate to the Satans until the end. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Now that you know the fallen angels taught mankind all the wickedness in this world, Israelites, it is important that you understand what sorcery is. In addition, what are the effects sorcery have on a person's life? The best definition of sorcery is religion. If you truly want to know what sorcery is, religious traditions is the most popular and most effective form of sorcery. Every time I talk about sorcery and witchcraft, I always mention idolatry. I always say you cannot practice sorcery without idolatry because they go hand in hand. Israelites, no one can practice sorcery without idolatry. I will show you how idolatry and sorcery are connected. Israelites, behind every altar is a God. If the altar is a wicked altar, the God behind the altar would be fallen angels or unclean spirits. If the altar is holy, the Most High will be the God behind the altar. The Most High, the Father said, every altar that is built to him, he will visit the altar and bring blessings. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. Holy altars that are raised to the Most High in spirituality brings blessings, favor, and the help of the Most High. Israelites, you have to differentiate between the holy altars in spirituality and evil altars in religion. When it comes to spirituality, Prayer and fasting is the altar and sacrifice we give to the Father in this generation. Our people sacrifice animals to the Most High. Animal sacrifice symbolizes forgiveness of sin and many other things our people seek from the Most High in previous generations. Today, the Messiah is the symbol for forgiveness of sin. Before the coming of the Messiah, our people would sacrifice animals to atone for their sins. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood, and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood, and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Sin offerings are not the only offering animal sacrifices atone for in our culture. The scriptures list burnt offerings as well as first fruit offerings. 
The book of Leviticus in the Bible will give you more information about the different types of offerings our people made to the Father on an altar. Israelites, the practice of building an altar to the Most High started from the beginning with Adam. When Adam and Eve was looking for forgiveness of sin, they shed their blood and offered their blood upon an altar Adam built to the Most High seeking forgiveness of sin. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar and they took leaves from the trees outside the garden with which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood they had spilled. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled and offered it upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus entreating God, forgive us of our trespass and our sin and look upon us with thine eye of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before thee without ceasing. The Most High did not instruct Adam and Eve to build an altar to him to offer their blood upon it as a sacrifice for forgiveness of sin. The Most High was impressed with their offering that he accepted their blood offering and that is how you and I, the descendants of Adam, receive salvation. The Most High made a covenant with Adam and Eve to save them after they offered him their blood on an altar. Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, look upon Adam and Eve and upon their blood, which they had held up as an offering unto him, without an order from him for so doing, but he wondered at them and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. He smelt the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through thy blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. The Most High said to Adam, because he did this, he will send the word of God to imitate his sacrifice. When the word of God shed his blood, that is how this generation and many other generations receive forgiveness of sin after repentance. Building an altar to the Most High is a tradition our people have done throughout their generations. Our people connected and communicated with the Most High upon the altars they built to him. You can verify this information throughout the scriptures in the Bible. When Elijah wanted to prove to the heathens that the God of Israel was the only God, Elijah built an altar to the Most High. After Elijah made a sacrifice on the altar to the Most High, once the Most High accepted the offering, he displayed his incredible power as a sign of accepting the offering. Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the Father Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is the God. Today, the heathens will make you believe the spiritual practices of our people are sorcery. They label spirituality witchcraft, but that is false. 
The scriptures in the Bible reveal to us the customs and practices of our people to connect with the Most High. Building altars to the Most High is not sorcery or witchcraft. This is what the Most High instructed his people to do when communicating with him as well as when they are seeking forgiveness of sin before the Messiah. Did you notice the scripture said Elijah built the altar to the name of the Most High? And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. Every altar that is built to the Most High is holy. If the Most High approve of your offering, he will bless you. Just as when Cain and Abel both brought an offering to the Most High on the altar, Adam built. The Most High accepted Abel's offering and not Cain's offering. And in process of time, it came to pass that... Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. The book of Adam and Eve will give you more details about Cain and Abel's offering to the Father. The scriptures in the Bible exclude a lot of important information that result in the Most High not accepting Cain's offering. Israelites, today your altar is your prayer life. The sacrifice you give to the Most High is fasting. If the Most High is pleased with your offering, that would be your fast. The Most High will grant you your heart desire. If your offering is trash, do not expect anything from the Most High. The Most High will not accept your sacrifice. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person? Saith the Lord of hosts. A lot of Israelites believe if they do the bare minimum, the Most High will bless them. Israelites, you need to give the Most High a very good offering in order to show him how serious you are about what you're seeking him for. If you want deliverance from an unclean spirit and the unclean spirit that is tormenting you is the kind that flee only through prayer and fasting, you can't do a six hour fast thinking that will cause the devil to flee. Marine spirits are the kind of spirits that require fasting. If you have a spirit spouse, you need to do a dry fast for at least three days. And sometimes you need to do more than one fast to get that devil to flee. Marine spirits are stubborn spirits and very wicked. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Presently, the beast system is infested with marine spirits. That is why so many are struggling with sexual orientation. This generation is having all sorts of identity crises. The spirit of fornication is controlling many. All of this is due to workers of iniquity unleashing marine spirits against the people. Every altar built to the Most High are holy and the Most High will accept your offering on the altar if your ways please the Most High. Every altar that is not built to the Most High are evil altars. Israelites, now do you see why religion is sorcery? The Most High is not the creator of religion. The Satans created religion to imitate the Most High's spirituality. Remember, Satan imitates everything the Most High does to deceive. The Satans took the traditions and customs the Most High gave to his people. Mix paganism with the customs of the Israelites and built altars to demons and unclean spirits in religion. The book of King in the Bible reveal how our people taught the heathens our traditions and showed them how to serve the Most High. That is how the heathens were able to live on our land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there. 
and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Before our people taught the heathens our customs, the Most High was destroying the heathens, the king of Assyria placed on our land when the Most High removed his people from his sight. The Most High sent lions among them to destroy them. The scriptures reveal that after the heathens learn our customs, they begin to include their pagan practices with the customs taught to them by a Levite priest. The heathens that dwell on our land began to fear the Most High as well as serve their idol gods. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. As you can see, the traditions of the heathens in religion is a mixture of our customs and paganism. Almost all religion in the beast system have some sort of our customs embedded in them to deceive you into believing you're serving the God of our fathers. Behind every altar is a God. The Most High is not the God the heathens serve in religion. Therefore, every altar in religion is built to an idol God. Israelites, this is how idolatry intermingle with sorcery. The workers of iniquity are using the power from the God they serve to obtain their heart desire. When you serve their gods in religion, that is how you fall into the sin of idolatry. By now, we all should know the first commandment. There should be no other gods before the Most High. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Every altar that is not built to the Most High, the Father, is an evil altar built to idols. If you serve and worship anything other than the Most High, you're guilty of idolatry. The gods of the heathens is not our God. That is why you must come out of religion because religion is sorcery and idolatry. An altar is a meeting place where spirits and humans interact. Sorcery is when you use the power of the kingdom of darkness to obtain your heart desire. The workers of iniquity and religion build evil altars to their idol gods. When they do altar calls, they sacrifice the people in their congregation to the idol behind the altar. Most people are led to believe the God behind the altar in their church is the most high. However, the God behind the altar is whatever God the worker of iniquity serve. That can be a demon or an unclean spirit. Sorcery is when the high priest or a worker of iniquity use unclean spirits or the power of the kingdom of darkness to accomplish their will. Religion does both. The workers of iniquity and religion use familiar spirits to prophesy to the people while sacrificing the people to their gods on their evil altars. Now can you see how religion is sorcery and idolatry? In addition, can you comprehend how idolatry and sorcery go hand in hand? For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Familiar spirits are unclean spirits the workers of iniquity use to prophesy to the people. Familiar spirits are Satan's imitation of the Holy Spirit. In religion, the familiar spirits are disguised as the Holy Ghost. Today, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. The Most High Spirit doesn't torment anyone. Why would his spirit be called a holy ghost in religion? Ghosts are known for tormenting people. You know what else are known for tormenting people? Unclean spirits and demons. Israelites, are you making the connection? Ask the Most High to give you the spirit of discernment to help you understand this message. Now that you know the workers of iniquity build altars disguised as a church, temples, and assemblies all over the beast system, Religion is not the only place that have altars. Religion is the most successful place. The workers of iniquity place their evil altars to control the masses everywhere. The heathens place evil altars in their businesses. 
when you see these altars in their stores and restaurants, some of you mistake these altars for decorations. Israelites, if you allow the Most High to open your eyes, you will begin to see these altars in the heathen stores and everywhere you go in the beast system. These devils are hiding in plain sight. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Besides the church and the heathen's establishments, the people who serve idols also have altars in their houses. They practice sorcery and witchcraft behind closed doors in their house. A lot of workers of iniquity disguise their altars under religion. The purpose of an altar is to worship and serve your God, as well as to make sacrifices to your God. If the worker of iniquity worship Baal or Moloch, that will be the God the altar is built to. A lot of Israelites see these altars in the beast system and automatically believe the altars are built to the Most High, the God of Israel. That would be false. Most, if not all, the altars in the beast system are built to idols. Israelites, this is why you need to allow the Most High to transform you by renewing your mind. The beast system is a battlefield. You have to be ready. I hope you're beginning to see why you must keep the armor of the Most High on at all times. You live among your enemies and your enemies are conspiring against you every day. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Israelites, you need to know how these altars are connected with the spirit realm. The spirit realm reveals to you everything that the eyes of the flesh cannot see in the physical realm. The spirit realm revealed the invisible. When a worker of iniquity give their idol a sacrifice on an evil altar built to the idol, let's say the worker of iniquity wants to steal money from his victim. The worker of iniquity will do a ritual and give the idol a sacrifice on the altar built to the idol. When the idol accepts the sacrifice, the idol will send unclean spirits to torment the targeted individual to establish a covenant. In this example, the spirit of poverty will take many forms to establish a covenant with the victim in the spirit realm and the physical realm. The spirit of poverty can take on the form of rats and other insects infesting your house in the spirit realm. The spirit of poverty steal your purse or wallet in the spirit realm. Those are some symbols you will see in the spirit realm that reveal the spirit of poverty is looking to establish a covenant. Israelites, beware of their covenants. Make no covenants with the heathens and with their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. If the spirit of poverty establish a covenant and the victim did not reject the covenant, the victim will begin to take major losses to his or her finances in the physical realm. Remember, everything that is going to take place in your life first takes place in the spirit realm first. Signs to look for in the physical realm that reveal the spirit of poverty successfully establish a covenant with you in the spirit realm, excessive or uncontrollable spending. Everything in your house starts to break. For example, your air conditioning unit breaks suddenly. Once you fix the AC system, the roof starts to leak. One thing after another begins to fail in your home or job. The spirit of poverty will attack you and your possessions to get you to spend all of your money to put you in debt to the beast system. Those are some signs that manifest in the physical realm that indicate the spirit of poverty successfully established a covenant with you in the spirit realm. Once the covenant is established in the spirit realm, the kingdom of darkness will begin to enforce the covenant in the beast system. That is where the workers of iniquity who carry out the will of the Satans come to collect from you in the beast system. If you're a righteous person serving the Most High, the unclean spirit will come to torment you by trying to frustrate you to give up. The unclean spirit won't be able to establish a covenant with a righteous person that know the word. If you're clueless about religion and sorcery, the unclean spirit will establish a covenant with you. Israelites, this is why it's important to increase your knowledge in these last days. You don't want to perish for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. 
seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. If you're a righteous person that is serving the Most High, your dreams will show you where the Satans and unclean spirits are attacking you. The Most High will allow you to see to help you. Dreams that reveal you're tied to an evil altar, if you see yourself caged or locked in a cage, if you see yourself under a tree, you see yourself at a celebration eating abominable food. Majority of the time, the food you will eat at the celebration is meat. Your spirit have been summoned to a specific location in the spirit realm. You're in a car going somewhere, but someone else is driving the car. These are some dreams that reveal you're tied to an evil altar or someone else is controlling your life. Israelites, if your spirit is tied to an evil altar, you're not in control of your life. Someone else is controlling your every move. If you're in religion and continue to worship the gods of religion, your spirit is tied to a religious altar. A lot of Israelites are tied to Christianity's evil altars built to Jesus Christ. By now, everyone should know Jesus is the other Messiah that came in his own name, as well as he is the God of this world. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. The scriptures made it very clear in the Bible that Satan is the God of this world. If Jesus is the God that is accepted by the majority in the beast system, then Satan is disguising himself as Jesus in the beast system. Remember, Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. His ministers also can transform themselves as ministers of righteousness. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. A lot of Israelites transform Jesus into an indigenous black person and continue to worship him. There is no difference between black Jesus and white Jesus. The time has come for you to wake up. Israelites, there are good and evil altars. The workers of iniquity want you to believe every altar are evil altars especially when it comes to spirituality. That is how the workers of iniquity who practice sorcery under religion slander all people who are not tied to their evil altars in religion. They do this to torment the people who are knowledgeable about the word of the Most High. The way the beast system attack a person is to discredit them by slandering them in the media. A lot of indigenous black people have taken the customs of these heathens. In the false awakening, they slander and humiliate one another on social media to discredit each other. So many are perishing and they don't even know it. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people are controlled by the workers of iniquity in the beast culture. That is why the black community is destroyed in the beast system. What person who truly know they are made in the image and likeness of the Most High would alter their appearance to look like the fallen angel's seed? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Any indigenous black person who loved the Father and served the Most High wouldn't hate themselves because they are the image of the true creator. It blows my mind that a black person can hate themselves to the point of altering themselves or breeding out their seed because of self-hatred. The reason self-hatred and other wicked spirits are ravishing the Israelites and indigenous black people, a lot of our people are controlled by the workers of iniquity whose altars their spirits are tied to. Israelites and indigenous black people break those covenants. The Most High show you what is happening in the spirit realm via your dreams to save you and to help you. Don't ignore the Father when he reach out to you in the spirit realm. The Most High will give you instructions in the spirit realm. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, and he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. Israelites, the workers of iniquity are not censoring this series for no reason. They know that this is truth. 
The workers of iniquity will do everything that they can to come against anything that glorify the truth of the Most High's words. Don't be slack to increase your knowledge about the spirit realm and spiritual warfare. There are altars all over the beast system. Majority of these altars are built to idols. That is why the scripture said, broad is the road that leads to destruction and many are on that road. The beast system only have a few altars built to the most high, which confirm the word of the most high that said, narrow is the road that leads to life. A few will find that road. Israelites, I am here to make sure the remnant that would inherit eternity with the most high in this generation stay on the narrow road that leads to life. The question to ask yourself, are you committed to your walk with the most high? The time has come for you to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow the father. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works.'"